Hi guys, uh, just coming back uh, with regards to uh, when we were doing the tutorial about drilling uh, the holes in this storm bolter of this Dark Angels Deathwing Terminator. Uh, I'm just going to look about uh, what we talked about with the damage that I caused from drilling. See that in there? Just on top of me, it's not a major bit of damage, but uh, it will affect paint. Job when it's finished. So what I'm going to go and do first is just paint it back into black. And while we do that, we'll paint where the drill's called. As you can see, I'm using quite a thin coat of uh, chaos black at the moment. So I don't mind doing a couple of thin coats. It's always better to do that. I'm just trying to slop it on with a great big thick coat the paint which obscures details and can create really un unhealthy looking models so they have blotches all over them and bubbles and what have you so the best thing to do when you're painting is, is just to be patient and just do it in thin layers and cover up bit by bit see on the second layer there start to get a bit more coverage I mean this whole thing will be painted black, the bolt casing, and the, uh, the bolter itself. But I find it's better if we've got contrasting colours there, because you can actually see in more detail what it is I'm actually working on, rather than the whole thing being the same colour. Although I'm using reasonably watered down paint, with the lighting I've got on here to give you guys a good look at what I'm doing. Paint, because the lighting uh, the paint dries up pretty quickly which I don't mind because it speeds up the painting process uh, obviously that causes a problem, only really causes a problem when I'm trying to do wet blending and as you can see it doesn't actually look too bad at the moment because it's all black can't really see too much of the damage that was there. Right now, if we add a bit, see if that's dried up on the black. It has. If we add a bit of silver to this now, a bit of the, uh, the gun metal. But I've heard lots of people ask about why you see most people painting metallic colours over black. Uh, and the main reason is, is black is a very good base colour for darker colours obviously, so it gives instant shading. But metallic paints are a little bit opaque. Now, if you paint them thinly they don't give 100% coverage. I mean, if we do it on this piece of paper here you can see that we've got some nice coverage there but we can still see the paper through underneath. Still see the white of the paper coming through underneath. Uh, and you get that with a lot of other papers but uh, with a lot of other paints, sorry. But with the metallics, it seems to be more prevalent. And so when you paint it on black, it just gives it a, a better depth of colour than if you paint on the white. If you paint on the white, it wouldn't give it a, a really true colour of the metallic itself. And so with the black paint underneath... Sorry, painting away here, talking away. With the black paint underneath, it helps to give a better platform for this metallic paint to sort of come through on. And the black underneath helps to bring and highlight the silvers and, the, and whatever colours you've got on top of it. Whereas if you had white underneath, it would make the colours look a lot duller on top of the, sil on, on top of the, uh, the base coat. So I'll just recap, if you put the black base coat and then whatever metallic you're putting on, it makes it stand out more, makes it pop more. Uh, because obviously it's a lot lighter, those metallic colours, than the black itself. Whereas if you've got the white base coat underneath and then you put the silver on top, for example, it makes it shine through underneath and it makes it, uh, doesn't make it pop so much, it makes it sort of blend in with the base colour. So it's always better to do, even if you've painted your whole model like we've done with these guys in one colour, it's best to go back over all your silver uh, or any metallic bits and paint them black first before you put any metal paint on. 
because it adds a little bit of depth and grittiness to the, to the metallic paint as well as helps it to pop better because it's not being interfered with by a lighter base coat or undercoat. I'll do another video about how we can repair damage. It's dead easy, it's a bit of green stuff basically. Pop some, I probably don't even know if I'm going to need to do a video, just put a bit of green stuff. And just pop it in and push it into the mould. Just there. Into the, the holes it were into the dent. Make sure you flatten it off all around. Obviously using the sculpting tool, not your fingers. Uh, mould the green stuff in and make it smooth. In. Try, especially try and find the contour of the, of the gun on top. Over there. And then when you've done that, you let it dry, let it sit for 24 hours, let the green stuff dry, and then just sand it down at the front very gently. And use a, a file, a very small file, something like this. A little round one. Here. And use just the tip and just gently move it across and back and forth until it's smooth. And then you won't even know, once it's been painted over, you won't even know there was any damage there. But with this, to make it look a bit more battle damaged, uh, what we need to do is now we've painted the, so the main gun metal on. We take a lighter colour, in this case we've got Vallejo, Vallejo Air Steel. Uh, obviously the gun in Vallejo Air is, is the gun metal. The steel here is chainmail in the uh, Games Workshop Citadel paints. And I'm rinsing my brush out here with the metallic paint. I've got two pots of water. I have one for the normal paints like uh, Citadel Foundation or the colour range. And then we have another pot for washing out metallics because you should never cross contaminate the metallics with other paints in your water because the pigment in the metallic tends to separate when it hits water a lot more than pigments in the other colours. Now here, just let me concentrate on this. Do that properly guys. Bit of this chain mail in the the middle there. Okay. And I haven't really covered it hundred percent there. I know it doesn't show up on the camera very well, sorry. But uh, what we've really done is we've we've painted in the bit that comes down here, but we've left it towards the back of the the hole as it were. Uh, a bit dark, we've painted and highlighted on the edges and what we're going to do now is we'll uh, come back with a black wash fantastic uh, I'm not that keen on most of the Citadel paints to be honest, uh, I try and use the Vallejo model colour or the Vallejo air where possible, especially for metallic the Vallejo model air is fantastic the, the density of pigment in the Vallejo model air is second to no paint uh, but the washes are fantastic from Games Workshop uh, they just save so much time. Just need a little bit of wash on this one. I'll go in there and just drop it in. Do it on the rest of the casing as we do it. Don't need a great deal on this one. Uh, what we will do though is we'll have a little bit more to pop into the holes. And make sure when you're doing this in the holes you'll get like a film covering the hole, I don't know if you can see it there, but there's films. Best thing to do is get another dry brush and just work it in and pop the hole and push the paint as it were down into the hole. Otherwise it'll make a, a very messy look. I mean, usually it pops itself, the bubbles pop themselves on the uh, washes, but I have had occasions where it's just it hasn't and it's just left the skin which means I've ended up having to sand that bit off clean that paint off and start again on that bit so it's just it's worth noting to do that but I know I'll have to leave that wash for a while uh, when it's dry we'll come back and just touch it up again with a little bit of uh, silver again uh, chain mail sorry and I'll have a look at what it looks like we'll be back in a minute guys Okay guys, so this model's dried up now. Yeah. We did before. As you can see it's blended back again. 
some of the highlights that we did. But what we need to do now with a very fine brush, just on the edges where the damage was. Touch it slightly with some silvery paint again. And there we go, it's like genuine battle damage. It's like it's taken a bolt around straight to the centre of the bolter. Put a hair there from somewhere. Uh, bolt damage straight to the bolter. That hole now looks pretty convincing battle damage. Not sure it's showing up too well on the camera, I'm sorry. But uh, it does work. 